Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> Today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are aboard the deluxe passenger spaceship, the Supernova, headed for the planet Saturn. As they enter a private compartment in search of a criminal, an occupant of the compartment pulls a ray gun on them. Just keep moving down the corridor, Commander. We're going to a lot of trouble. You must be counting on taking quite a lot of money from Grayson. Think what you like. All right, hold it. This is where we part company. I just opened this little metal door. Now, crawl in there, both of you. You can't put us in there. That's the ship's rubbish disposal chute. I know what it is. Get in. But before we reach Saturn, that chute will be emptied into space. Of course. A blast of compressed air will keep you out of the ship, and no one will know you're gone. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, Trouble Aboard the Supernova. <laughs> Say, do you hear that, Space Patrollers? That's a flavor tester, an instrument for finding out how good breakfast cereals are. I'm standing in a grocery store right now, so let's run the flavor tester along this cereal shelf. Well, there's no flavor in these cereals. I'm not getting a peek from our flavor tester. Uh-oh, it's starting now. Hey, the flavor tester is going wild, and here's the cereal that's doing it. Rice check. The super cereal that helps to supercharge you. Yeah, better turn the flavor tester off before it jumps out of my hand. Yes, sir, gang, for wonderful flavor, wonderful rice checks. Crisp, golden, bite-sized biscuits you'll love. Try some today. Delicious rice checks. And remember, inside the package, there's a magic space picture. <laughs> and now, today's Space Patrol adventure, Trouble Aboard the Supernova. One of the most important industrial concerns in the United Planets is Solar Technic. Its research staff has been responsible for hundreds of discoveries in many fields of industry, and their achievements have increased the comfort and security of people on all the planets. Solar Technic is noted for its generosity in making its processes available not only to the government, but to other companies as well. Our story opens in the office of Clark Ruckler, the assistant coordinator of Solar Technic on the man-made planet Terra. Butler is talking to one of his young field men, Mark Grayson. I can't impress this on you too strongly, Grayson. These documents are to be delivered to the supervisor of our Saturn plant and to no one else. Is that clear? Yes, Mr. Lee. Actually, my chief wanted me to deliver this microfilm strip myself. But for the time being, I can't leave Terra, so I'm turning the assignment over to you. Well, I'm very grateful for the opportunity, Mr. Lee. Frankly, I had to do a lot of talking to convince the chief that you could be trusted. I appreciate that very much. I know my record wasn't too good before coming here to Solar Technic, but in the past three I'll years... your record here, and keep it clean. Now, here's the procedure. We'll blast off for Saturn tomorrow evening in 1,800 hours aboard the supernova. The strip of microfilm will be concealed in a special ring which the chief will give you tomorrow. That ring can be removed from your finger only by turning the setting in a certain way. Well, like a combination lock. Yes, but don't fool with it. The Saturn supervisor will remove it when you report to him. The information is extremely vital to solar tech, so don't tell anyone. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ruckler. All right, Walbert, come in. Huh, did you get a look at Grayson? Yeah. Through the crack of the door. I can handle him all right. If you do what I tell you, rough stuff won't be necessary. But carry a ray gun just in case. Sure. He'll be in compartment 23, huh? Mm -hmm. Don't get acquainted with him too quickly. Somewhere between the Earth and Mars orbit will be soon enough. He's crazy about chess. Uh, suggest a game in your compartment or his. Mm. Then I slip something in his coffee to put him to sleep and take the ring. Right. Now here's the duplicate. Put it on his finger. Then your part is over except for meeting me on Saturn. What's going to keep Grayson from suspecting me? And the satin supervisor finds there's no microfilm in the ring. A couple of muscle men will grab him before he gets to the Saturn plant. They'll rough him up and take the ring. Grayson will think they're the thieves. 
Do you think you can pedal the microphone without getting cut? I've got that end all covered. Grayson will have to take the rap. That past record of his, the chief will figure he takes the robbery. But you recommended Grayson to carry the microfilm. Yes. <laughs> so I regretfully submit my resignation for having made such a costly mistake to the company. Uh, I'll resign from Solar Tech. Yeah, and live like a king on what we get for the microfilm. Yeah. What it is for a chance like this. And with your help, Walbert, it'll pay off without Wow, a trip to Pluto on the supernova. Uh, this isn't a mission, sir. It's a vacation. I want it to look like a vacation, Happy. That's why we're in civilian clothes. But we'll have plenty of work to do when we reach Pluto. Uh-oh. What is it, sir? I just recognize one of the passengers. He's around the other side of the crowd. I don't want him to see us. Mm-hmm. I can't recall his name right now, but he used to do a lot of space traveling on passenger ships a few years ago. For the result that a lot of the passengers found the trip more expensive than they'd planned. You mean he's a thief? Not that he could prove it. He'd get people into a friendly game of cards or chess, and they'd have a surprising run of luck. Grayson. That's just Mark Grayson. He hasn't been in trouble lately, so he may have gone straight, but it won't hurt to keep an eye on him. If you see him getting too chummy with any of the passengers. Uh, the gate's opening, sir. When we get aboard, we'll go right to our compartment. It's number 22. gone so long, Commander. I lost track of the time. That's all right, Happy. I won't need you for a few minutes, then. I'm just finishing a check of the Pluto Base Command report. Know where we are now? Well, I'd say we're about 50,000 DUs outside the Earth's orbit. Hmm, good, yes, sir. 45,000. I've been watching the big chart in the Astro Lounge. It uh, shows the progress of the ship. Is that friend Grayson in there? Well, he came in just as I was leaving. Want me to check on him, Commander? Mm, wait a while, Happy. In half an hour or so, you might go into the lounge. It'd be rather embarrassing if someone was swindled with a space patrol commander in chief aboard. I see what you mean. Well, we don't uh, we don't seem to be making much time. How's that? Well, I was just noticing the astro charge. The ship doesn't seem to be moving. Oh. Well, there's a lot of space out here. Yeah, there is indeed. A great deal of space, I'd say. Uh, your first trip on the supernova? Well, my first in a long time. Oh, we seem to be the only passengers out. I do know. Well, for some reason, I, I can never sleep when I'm traveling. It's strange when you consider I do a lot of it. I reach about two trips a week. Uh, Wobot's the name. Tyrant Wobot. I'm with the transograph people. Transograph? Yeah, you probably never heard of it. We make special code machines for firms <laughs> conducting interplanetary business. That's a very interesting work. It is. Uh, by the way, I, I didn't catch the name. Oh, Grayson. Mark Grayson. Oh, glad to know you, Grayson. It's nice to have an intelligent man to talk to. That is, if uh, you don't mind talking. No. No, not at all. You know, I like you, Grayson. Looks like this isn't going to be such a dull trip after all. Maybe I would even miss my game of uh, three-dimensional chess. Three-dimensional chess? Yeah. yeah. I don't suppose you play it. Well, I, I used to. Once in a while. Well, now, isn't this a coincidence? But it is rather late, and you're probably tired. Oh, no. No, not at all. Well, if you like, we could have the tour bring in a projector board, and well, maybe we could go to my compartment. We could play a game right here in the lounge. All right. Uh -huh. I see we got company. That young fellow who just came in. Oh, well, he won't bother us. Well, maybe not. But I hate to be in the middle of the play and have him come up and start asking stupid questions. You know how these youngsters are, full of curiosity. Well, well we could play in my control. Oh, fine, fine. I'll have the sword bring out some nice hot coffee and a... It looks like Grayson is up to his old tricks. That's so? Yes, sir. He and this older man are in Grayson's compartment across the corridor. And the steward brought in a three-dimensional chess set. Mm. 3D chess isn't such a popular game. It's rather odd that Grayson should just happen to find such a congenial partner right off the bat. And he may have had his man marked for some time. Still, we haven't any grounds to interfere. Oh, well, maybe we could just happen in by mistake. You know, the wrong compartment. Uh, I'll keep that idea in mind.
It's uh, your move, Grayson. Uh, Grayson, I played. Grayson? Yes, he's asleep now. I have to get the ring off of his finger. Because... Gentlemen, I'm afraid you have the wrong compartment. I don't think so. Isn't that three-dimensional chest you're playing? Yeah, that's right. My companions seem to have dozed off. I see. He must trust you to be so relaxed. An old friend, no doubt. No, I just met him. I, I don't see what business it is of yours. Oh, no offense. I'd like to ask a question. Who was winning? For someone who blundered into the wrong compartment, you got a lot of nerve. It wasn't a blunder. Take a look at this. Taste the pro bag. Now, for your own good, tell me. Was he winning? Hey, yes, he was. Very much? Oh, quite a bit. Why? This man used to make quite a good living playing chess with strangers. Apparently, he still does. You mean he... Oh, no. <laughs> he went to sleep if he's dishonest. Wouldn't he stay awake? I and... doubt that he's as sleepy as he pretends. He figures you're an honest man who will quietly go away and leave his winnings on the table. Happy? Yes, sir. Close the door. We'll wake Mr. Grayson. Thanks. Come on, Grayson. Wake up. I want to ask you a few questions. Come on, Grayson. Wake up. You're wasting your time, gentlemen. Get your hands up and turn around. Commander. Well, I do as he says, Happy. He has a ray gun. So you knew who Grayson was and outsmarted him. That's right. I outsmarted Grayson. Now keep your hands up, both of you. I'll see if anyone is out in the corridor. All right. It's all clear. Come on. Now, no trick, either of you. Just go down the corridor. All right. Hold it. This is where we part company, gentlemen. I'll just open this little metal door. Now, crawl in there. You can't put us in there. Because that's your disposal chute. I know what it is. I'm in. Before we reach Saturn, that chute will be emptied into space. Of course. A blast of compressed air will sweep you out of the ship, and no one will know you're gone. And just to make sure... Commander! You do to death. Wait. And now I have to lift you into the chute. There, Commander. Now the ship's dead. <clears throat> and there. There, face the pole man. You'll be the first passengers to leave the supernova by way of the rubbish chute. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Buzz Perry wants you to know about the secret of how space patrollers get a rip roaring start in the morning. Here's what they do they eat a breakfast that supercharges them a power breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks. Check the super cereal with that modern bite sized design. The cereals with a swell new taste that you'll like right off the reel. Well, gang, now you know how space patrollers get that rip roaring morning start. So get a flying start yourself every morning. Sit down to a nourishing breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks, the super cereals that help to supercharge you. And remember, you get a magic space picture inside every package. And now, back to our space patrol adventure, Trouble Aboard the Supernova. Buzz and Happy boarded the luxury spaceship, the Supernova, on a mission to Pluto. The commander noticed that among the passengers was Mark Grayson, Formerly a petty cook, but now employed by the highly reputable Solar Technic firm. Grayson's superior, Clark Wechler, has engineered events so that Grayson will be held responsible for the theft of valuable microfilm documents, which Grayson carries in a special ring on his finger. Wechler's partner, Walbert, was about to remove the ring from Grayson's finger when Buzz and Happy entered Grayson's compartment on the spaceship. Pretending to be a victim of Grayson's supposed dishonesty, Walbert suddenly pulled a ray gun and after rendering Buzz and Happy unconscious, pushed them into the refuse disposal chute of the big spaceship. Before the ship reaches Saturn, the contents of the chute will be blasted out into space. Now recovering from the effects of the ray gun, Buzz and Happy find themselves in the narrow confines of a small, thick black room. 
the opening must be right here so I can see the thin groove where the door is. Let's try to force it open. We've got to get out of here before they enter the street. Who's no you? Maybe somebody will hear us pounding and open the door. It's probably sound too, Captain. Anyway, nobody will be out in the car at this time. So wait a minute. If that fellow that put us in here didn't search us, he left so many to his I don't have mine, sir. It's back in the compartment. I've got mine. Well, we can contact the captain of the ship and, and get out of here in two minutes. Then we can find the guy that put us in here and really give him a going over. Now, hold on, Happy. Huh? More to this than the crooked chest game. Huh? Well, it could just as easily have been locked up in a closet to give a man a chance to escape when he landed on Saturn. But this fellow was willing to get rid of us permanently. Yeah, that's what makes me so mad. We get out of here. I don't want to know we've escaped. That'll give us a chance to find out what he really was doing in Grayson's compartment. Well, maybe he's going to put Grayson in here, too. Maybe. Let's see how quickly we can get out of here. Commander Corey calling Captain Ferris of the Supernova. Commander Corey calling Captain Ferris of the Supernova. Captain Ferris, go ahead, Commander. You know I'm aboard, I suppose. Yeah, I noticed the NSA after your name on the passenger list, so I followed through. No special attention. I know, but I'm afraid I'm going to need a little special attention. Anything you say, Commander? Send the regular steward to the refuge disposal opening and passenger corridor A immediately. I'm in the suit. Uh, I'll come myself. Away, Captain. Just send the steward. I don't want any excitement aboard the ship. Very well, Commander. Well, Captain, one thing. Yeah. Pass the word along not to open the chute until Cadet Happy and I are out of it. Your move, Grayson. Huh? What did you say? I said it's uh, your move. Oh. Oh, so. Let me see. Excuse me, Will, but did I doze off? Oh, you are the at time, I assure you. And if you have been asleep, I'd have taken the opportunity to take advantage of you. <laughs> what? Oh, what's going on? Oh. Here. How do you like that? Check and make. Ah, uh, one again. And I thought I had you. You're a wizard, this 3D test, Jason. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Just luck, I guess. Uh, I wish I had that kind of luck. Well, we're both getting sleepy. You better turn in. We'll be on Captain in about three hours. And thanks for the game. Honestly, I, I enjoyed losing. Well, the game did me a lot of good. But believe me, it was a lot of tension. There was nothing like a nice quiet game. Well, Captain, the luggage is all packed, man. We'll find Happy. We'll be landing in Saturn in 20 minutes. We'll wait till everybody else is off the ship before we leave our compartment. Is that about Grace? I've checked on him to the captain. He's working for Solar Technic. One of the special guards is meeting him in the ship land. The captain showed me the space land. Well, Fifteen minutes till we land. We get to Saturn headquarters. We'll space the phone Pluto Base Command. That will be a few hours later. Station 15. Could that happen here? No, Commander Corey isn't here. I think he's somewhere around Saturn headquarters, maybe. Yes, sir, I'll tell him. Oh, Commander, uh, Major Harper called and said uh, Colonel Redding has been trying to reach him. I just talked to him. He still has a detail watching Walbert. Walbert hasn't left the Saturn Space Hotel since he checked in. Well, yes, sir, but did you know that Grayson never arrived at the Saturn plant in Solar Technic? Yes, I saw the report from the supervisor. Well, what do you suppose happened to him? The uniformed guard from Solar Technic met Grayson at the spaceport. No, I'll get it, huh? Station 15, Commander Corey here. Cool. All right, send him in. Happy. You have a visitor. Who, sir? Under the circumstances, the last person you'd expect to walk into Saturn Space Patrol headquarters. Who do you mean, sir? Grayson. Commander Corey? Yes, Grayson. Sit down. Have to put on the recorder. Yes, sir. Grayson. You were due at Solar Technic plant three hours ago. Where have you been? I've been robbed. What about the guard who met you at the supernova? He was one of the robbers. Or the stolen thing. He might have been. He's ready. If I'll bring off my finger. Here. Look, look, you can see when he cut my finger there. Now, wait a minute. The guard robbed you? Yes. He and another man. A man in a red plastic mask. The guard and I were in a surface car driving down Avenue J. When now, hold it, Grayson. How does a man in a red plastic mask fit in? He stepped out and hailed the surface car. The guard stopped. They drove me to Saturn City the Park. Then the guard held me, and the other man, the man in the red mask, filed off the ring. Then they drove me around a while. 
turn you loose. Look, I, I know it sounds crazy, but it, it's the truth, honestly, come on. Happy, what do you think of this story? Well, it seems to me that if the third man was in so heat with the guard, he wouldn't have needed a man. Hey, at least he wouldn't have worn one of the suits. But that's what happened. Don't you believe me? Look, if I were lying, why wouldn't I make up a more plausible story? That's right. Possibly the fake guard and the masked man did take the ring after all. I swear they did. Okay. Who's Walter? Well, fellow I met on the second level. We played 3D chess and I can talk as well. Anything unusual happened during the game? Only that I won and I, I hadn't played in three years. Were there any interruptions? Did you fall asleep, for example? No. Yeah. And now that you mentioned it, I, I thought I got groggy for a minute. I, I thought I dozed off, but when I opened my eyes, there was Walbert smiling at me, waiting for me to move. It had only been a few seconds. It had been quite a few seconds, Jason. When I entered your <coughs> compartment, you were sound asleep. You were in my compartment? I never saw you until I came into this office two minutes ago. While you were asleep, Robert forced us into the refuge suit. Then he came back and finished the game. I can't believe it. You want us to believe your story? Well, Grayson, you may be telling the truth. I'll put you in custody here at headquarters while Happy and I visit Walbert. First, give me a full description of that room. Well, it had a setting that could turn a certain way in the bandstand. Inside the band. Doctor, what are you doing here, Sultan? As soon as I heard that Grayson didn't show up at the Saturn plant, I persuaded the chief I should come here to investigate. <laughs> After all, I recommended Grayson. I thought you were going to wait till I contacted you. Why waste the time? The phony guard and our masked man took care of Grayson. But how do we know what Grayson will do? If he has any sense, he'll get as far away from Saturn as he can. With his record, he'll believe he didn't arrange the robbery himself. But suppose he's stuck. If they give him a brain of grant test, the space patrol will know he's telling the truth. Yes. But he doesn't know all the truth. He doesn't know you removed the real ring aboard the supernova and substituted the other. Yeah. Uh, that's right. And the two space patrol men that found me in Grayson's compartment? Oh, they're floating out beyond Saturn now. Yes. The only thing Grayson can tell about you is that you played chess with him. <laughs> Let the space patrol look for the fake guard and you. Die in the red mask. Yeah, nice touch, Rucker. Nice touch. Yeah, thanks. Well, huh? how about that ring and the microphone? Yeah, I got it right here in my pocket. You can have this. I don't know. Get into the other room. I'll be watching. Yeah? Remember us, Mr. Walbert? Why? I don't believe so. You put us in the refuge suit of the supernova. Fortunately, we were able to get more roomy accommodation. We got out of the shoes, set the door happy, and searched our chest there for weapons. Yes. Wow, oh, a ray gun. Looks familiar, too. Uh-huh. Find anything else of interest? Not yet, sir. Well, but did you take a ring from Grayson? A ring? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You took some drastic measures to keep us from finding out what was going on in Grayson's compartment. Let's have the truth. Commander, I quit stalling. Where's the ring? All right. My jacket pocket. The right one. It's in there. Take a look at it. It's the ring, all right. And it looks like the one Grayson described. Watch him, Happy. I'll see if I can open it. Yes, sir. He turns to the ring. See to the left. It's down in the center. Here's the microphone. Even Grayson wasn't lying. Lord Commander, you saved me a nasty job. Who are you? I am uh, Clark Rucker, assistant coordinator of Solar Technics. Sure. Just how did you happen to be here? I have had reason to suspect this man, Walter. I came here because, frankly, I'm on the spot. I recommend Grace. And I'm happy to know he's innocent. Now, if you'll uh, just give me the microphone, I'll see that it's delivered to our staff and representative. Now, just a minute. We'll all go down to headquarters. Oh, well, that's the way you want it. Get them all, but... I didn't try that, Walbert. Let go of that gun, Rustler. No use continuing, Happy. The boys seem exhausted. You have the microfilm, sir? You bet. We'll turn it over to the Saturn plant, hand Rustler and Walbert over to the colonel, and then go on to Pluto. Fine, come on. 
Uh, but, sir, has half... uh, can't we go to Pluto in a plane space patrol cruiser? Why? If you like luxury space liners like the Supernova? Oh, they're all right, I guess, but the rubbish chutes are a little tight under the arms. Oh! <laughs> An action preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure in just a moment. Gang, here's big news about the most fabulous space patrol equipment ever offered on this program. The Space Patrol Microscope. So powerful, it makes things look 15 times bigger than they really are. So compact, it fits right in your pocket. Offered for just a short time longer. Offered so you can see the thousands of secrets and mysteries hidden away in gardens, yards, and houses. Think of it. You get a complete scientific microscope kit. You get the official Space Patrol Microscope. Strong, all-plastic, five-inch body. Glistening, emerald tone finish. Powerful, optically ground double lens. You get the famous atomic particle slide. Examine it in the dark through your space patrol microscope, and it looks like a wild flaming comet. You get a set of five transparent slides for mounting specimens. Each slide is two inches long, clear as crystal, made to wear and wear and wear. A miracle of invention, the space patrol microscope. You just take something small, a blade of grass, a piece of string, a bud, place it on one of the crystal clear slides, Slip it under the lens tube, and you can see that object magnified 15 times its actual size. You see details that leave you gasping, that set your mind spinning and your pulse beating. You see the living creatures, a drop of water, the designs of fingerprints, like whirlpools in a furious cataract, and a mere splinter, it looks like a giant sword. It's fun, mystifying, educational magic. So hurry, send for your Space Patrol microscope kit today. Hurry, because this big offer soon comes to an end. Just buy a box of life checks or wheat checks. Then with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and a life check or wheat check box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> And now a preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are attempting to rescue a girl who is being held captive in a metal factory in space in the orbit of Jupiter Moon Number Two. They have just entered the cargo hold of the plant and erased the face pieces of their spacesuits. Mandy, someone's coming. I can see them through the door at the other end of the cargo hold. Good. I do your gun, Mandy. Yes, sir. Commander, I can't move. Something's holding my feet. Someone's running a magnetic force field, holding our metal space suits. Get out of your suit. Hurry. Yes, sir. Commander, look up above. The cargo plane is coming down on us. There's an endurium beam on it. We've got to get out of these suits. With this magnetic field on Earth, that beam could crush us. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, Peril Over Jupiter, when we check, rice check, and good hot Wilson again present Space Patrol. <laughs> Special bulletin for boys and girls in Youngstown, Ohio, and Albany, New York. Buzz Corey's own space battle cruiser, the Ralston Rocket, will be in your area next week. Don't miss it. The Ralston Rocket. <laughs> space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kimmerer as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. <laughs> Other players were Baylor Kovach, Joe Cranston, and Ken Mayer. Dick Tufel speaking. <laughs> Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when we check, rice check, and good hot Wilson again present Space Patrol. <laughs> Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.